we do we did talk about florals and you do vintage cars yes even commissions I've had several vintage car commissions from really people have seen the ones in uh, that I did in Cuba uh-huh. of Cuban American cars and uh, I painted a Bentley recently for uh, somebody here in well they're in Knowlton and Montreal uh-huh. um, beautiful uh, dark green paint uh, car parked up on uh, Cedar Avenue outside of his his home Um yeah, that's one of many commissions. But I've done commissions, been asked to paint things that just sort of happened to par hasard. To uh, do you, could you paint this for me, Susan, or that? And there are special things to people, like their car, like their uh, vintage teacup, even, well, or their favorite flowers. That's interesting because I happen to have about 100 teapots. And I do like teacups, too. I did a, a, a commissioned painting of a teapot, too, you actually. Did? Oh, dear. Well, I have to show you some of my teapots sometime. I don't know how that sounds. Come over and see my teapots. <laughs> it's like etchings or something. Come yes, over and see my etchings. Yeah, it sounded like it. <laughs> but I think there's something very, I don't know, hostess, there's something very companionable about a picture of a teacup. I'm not sure if that's the right word, Susan. What is it that... Well, it stirs up history, and uh, I mean, we don't really use them anymore, but they're so pretty. One one teacup is packed with so much pretty stuff. The detail. Yeah, and if it's porcelain or bone china, the sun shining through it, you can see the you, transparency you in it, and you see that like in the painting. You do manage to make it look like a piece of porcelain. Yeah. You do get a lot of transparency so in they're, ma- they're sort of magical. It's like a beam of sunshine lands on them and lights yeah. up all the gold bits and the... It does. ...spots of color and... And, and, and uh, one of them you had a while back that I really had a fetish for, but it was purples, of course, with cobalt blue. Oh, I know had, the one you're talking and about. And a white, but a lot of floral pattern on the teacup. Yeah. And it looks like that teacup was a special teacup you would bring out for a special occasion. Come over and have tea. Yes. But for you, we're giving you a special cup. That's right. <laughs> well, I have a few special cups. You do? Those are all sold out. I don't have any teacups left. Well, but I've still done, somebody. I'll do anybody's teacup that they want me to paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and landscapes. And water, you see, water lilies, that's interesting. Yes. Water lilies are not easy. No, well, those I had to photograph also, because if you look at the angle they're at, they're, I'm down on my belly with my camera in, near the pond taking pictures of these water lilies. And you're not lilies. wearing your... You're, uh, My wetsuit. You have to wear. <laughs> you weren't going to say that. You have to be in comfortable clothes to be crouched down to get an eye level yes. view. Yeah. Of of how the water lily looks. Exactly. You know. But they're beautiful because they're floral and water, and yes. water sparkles, and the flowers have the color. Uh, I don't think you paint too many gloomy to days, Susan. No. Gloomy, no, painting gloomy would make me gloomy. I can't go there. <laughs> yes, well, okay. Now, I have to tell you, this is something that I'm really crazy out about. I feel that, well, one of my heroes, uh, Johannes Itten, who was a color theorist, and he did a lot of work on subjective color and how color is subjected to different people. And this is sort of related to this business that was taken from him and made into a book called Color Me Beautiful about are you a summer, a fall, a winter, a spring right, in terms of your book. coloring? And it was a major hit for women. And uh, I'm, I'm aware that I think it's very relevant. Um, another friend of mine who is an artist is very, well, he's Brazilian. He's very Latino-Brazilian in terms of his personal coloring. And he uses a much more somber and saturated palette than you do. Okay, and as we credit our audience with visualization powers out there in Radio Land, I'd like to have you visualize Susan Pepler has strawberry blonde kind of hair, porcelain complexion with a tiny dusting of freckles and porcelain sky blue eyes, and is currently wearing a 60s retro Gucci, Pucci, Pucci <laughs> dress of aquas and mauves and white and, uh, Lavenders and turquoises. Well, so what it goes a <laughs> beautifully, beautifully with her. It's the right colors. I don't think I would look good in those colors at all. It's got a little bit of your purple. <laughs> yes, but it's not saturated enough for okay. me. I need more saturated mm-hmm. royal purple for me. But I think that's a way to visualize how I think there is a relationship between your palette and the colors you perceive and the colors that you wear well. And the colors that you paint your house. 
I think so. You, I, I, somebody told me if you open up your closet, you'll see what your colors are because you choose them naturally. Right. And those will be the colors in your house right. and the paintings you love uh, and the doing, dishes you buy, everything. Absolutely. It should. You, you should. Your house and your home environment should be a manifestation of you. Well, it happens, I think, automatically or uh, For some subconsciously. some people who are sensitive. Other people are sort of colorblind and don't even That's realize true. it. You know, but I always say, play ball on the home court. If you can't look good in your own house, where can you look good? <laughs> Have flattering lighting and flattering colors. Yeah. Don't you find? Yes. Well, on the subject of purple and the water yes. lilies, to back up a little, yes, one yes. of my clients, a friend actually, bought a purple water lily because uh, purple was her favorite color. That's okay. why she bought it. So okay. I find people choose for all different kinds of fun reasons. Yes, it is. Somehow or other, there's a connection. Yeah. That's what makes that painting sing to them. Yes. Is yeah. sing the good word? Speech? Yes, it's a great word. I want yes, I, your paintings. I like are to singing. think my paintings sing. We don't have stomach aches with your paintings. You don't have stomach aches. No, with your paintings. no stomach aches. No. <laughs> well, I go to galleries and sometimes they go in there and say, "This is making me feel uncomfortable." This art, and I don't think you have to have the art. Be painful to be no. fine art. Well, life can be painful already and tough. So yes. to come home to or go to a gallery and see paintings that lift you up is a, uh, it's essential. I think it's essential. I don't think it's a luxury even. People no. say paintings are a luxury. No, they're life giving. They are to me. Yeah, thank I you. I have good memories. I have a watercolor that I did in '95 that was one of those the muses with me that day, and there's watercolors from the garden. Yeah. And I just said, I have got to do these watercolors. Yeah. And Those are the best paintings when you've got to. Watercolor, as you know, is not easy. It's not forgiving. Once it's down, you can't scrape it. And there's, it's still one of my favorite little paintings hmm. because of the way it was so fresh and I so like gestural. I see that one. I have to show you when you're back in Montreal together, okay. you know? Um, you said that you did landscapes. Now, butterflies is something that is not easy to do. That's true. It's so meticulous. Well, everything's a new challenge. The, one of my biggest challenges, or in the when I choose a new subject, there was a swimming pool scene I saw. I painted a few uh, beautiful tropical swimming pools. And the challenge was, can I do this? I've never painted a pool before. Same thing, and I did. It was, they turned out stunningly. And that's my goal, is to make, take a beautiful scene and make it even more beautiful. So the butterflies, they're already beautiful. They're no-brainer. But there's so many colors in them, and they're sitting on colored flowers. Yes. I, yeah, and their wings are transparent a little bit. But uh, You're really good with painting light and light reflections, more than some people I know in terms of art. Thank you. But, but you don't have gloomy colors in your palette very much. Well, there's almost every color in a paint. It's, it's yeah. amounts, I think, that uh, the balance. It's amounts, the balance. The balance, exactly. That's true. That's true. Well, you were saying that you were working on a couple of commissions now. Yes. Uh, one is a, a landscape in Jamaica. My mom is Jamaican, and so my roots are Jamaican. And we, there's a famous tree in Treasure Beach that uh, I was uh, commissioned to paint. It's by the sea. It's beautiful, and it just means a lot to is most Jamaicans. Is, is, so it's a really iconic tree in Jamaica. Exactly. It's known. It's famous, people, yes. People know this tree. Yeah. Really? So um, that uh, that's kind of fun. And then the other it's one... It's on the top of a hill or something? No, it's it's actually growing out of a coral. It's amazing that it's still out alive. Out of a coral? Yeah, a giant coral rock. So we must have these weird tentacles. Totally. It's uh, all, I mean, half the tree is roots. So I'm painting roots, the roots, the coral, the sea, the sky. The yeah. And the leaves, and I can't remember what, what the kind of tree it's called. But but it's, it's people know this tree. Oh, yes. Yeah. Fascinating. The Fascinating. other one is uh, the other extreme. It's a, a cathedral in Harbin, China, that a client of mine fell in love with the look of it and the interior. So she commissioned me to paint the interior dome of the painting, and we well, got she has to send you to China to do research, doesn't she? I was she? hoping, but that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, she found a picture and got uh, permission to use it as, the, uh -huh. as a basis as to do the painting. As sort of an inspiration for your painting. Exactly. That's fascinating. When you said trees earlier, there's a very well-known, as some people out there in Radio Land might know that I'm originally from New Orleans, even though I've been in Canada most of my adult life, at least 40-plus years, but... In New Orleans, well, in Lafayette, in the heart of the Bayou Country, there's the Evangeline Oak. 
And this is an oak that is very, very unusual. And live oaks are very strange because they're on the ground. They sort of fall down and they're very twisted and gnarled. Mm. And they're very gloomy and there's Spanish moss on them. Well, there's an artist there who does nothing but paint gloomy live oak trees with Spanish moss on it. His name is Rodriguez. And he has somehow or other, it's almost teetering on the edge of kitsch. But when you're there, you see these paint, these, these gnarled ancient trees. That sort of made me think of it. I haven't been to Jamaica, but I can imagine how this tree is sort of holding its on, holding on for to dear this. life, Yeah, basically. it's a coral, you know, and it's been there for hundreds of years. Yeah. Well, this is a tree that was there during the Acadian time wow. when the Acadians came down to Louisiana. And you, some people know that whole history in the, in the heart of the Bayou country. And so Evangeline in Wadworth, Henry Wadworth Longfellow's story of the whole diaspora of the Acadians, her real name was Emmeline Labiche. But Evangeline is easier for rhyming in your poems, you know? And she waited on the banks of Bayou Teche under this oak for her Gabriel to arrive, and hmm. he never did. There's a song about that. There is. It's a real iconic thing. And that made me think about your iconic tree in, in uh, Jamaica. Jamaica. And I'm thinking we should send Susan down to Louisiana to paint this tree because you would probably make it less gloomy. But it is ha it has a sense of ancient gloom. There's Evangeline this and Evangeline bread yeah. and all sorts of stuff down there. But there's a certain quality to that tree that is a bit mysterious. Hmm. Well, this one as well. You, this one, get, you've probably got to figure out how to make that soul come out of that yeah, tree. Yeah, make it sparkle even. I mean, it's a survivor tree, obviously. Yes. The, the sea is brushing up yes. against that stone and trying to knock it off the rock, and yeah. it still hangs on. That's amazing. But well, we do tend to paint our surroundings. That's why this fellow's painting that tree. I, I feel very uh, fortunate that I've traveled so much. So mm -hmm. I've, I've painted uh, everything from the tropics to... Um, Mont Broma here in the uh, winter time. We have. Yes. We've done some really good uh, snow scenes in the past, if I remember. Mm, no, more, not yet. More summery, I think. More maybe. summery, yeah. More I, color in summer. Have I have I mentioned that it's ninety nine point one FM radio communitaire Mrs. Squaw? Have I mentioned that? It's about time to say it again. And I'm here with Susan Pepler talking about her muse and her art and how uh, every artist sees things differently. There's a certain, not only is the movement of the paint on the canvas different, but there's also the color composition, uh, your, your palette of colors, your way of putting colors on the page is very, very different from other people, I find. Mm -hmm. The way you make a mark, just like handwriting in a way. Painting is your, your painted handwriting. <laughs> it's true, eh? With color. Very, very interesting. Well, you're not shy with color. No. And it always looks very lush. It always looks very, well, rich, happy, lush. Yeah. Those are good words that describe your work very much. Thank you. And this whole business with butterflies now is interesting. Yeah, that's a fairly new series. They've been a, a hit. Um, I think there are still a few on my on my studio Susan Pepler mm -hmm. site. Um, and the next a next area is going to be horses, horses because people are have been hard asking to do, me. I think. To me, everything is sort of the same. There's always some kind of a new challenge in we taking just have on to a new look subject. At the sculpture of the horse and work on that. Yeah. Get get the get the magic, the sheen, the shine, the beauty, the sparkle. There has to be all that going on before I'll let go uh -huh, of a painting uh -huh, to show uh -huh. it. You're remarkable. I'm noticing right now, the light in the studio here is shining on one corner of your your right eye, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the kind of the the tiny little dot of white that would make the canvas come alive. Wouldn't spark, it? yeah, a little Those bit little of sparkle. Those little tiny tiny spots exactly. make a canvas look completely yeah. different. Don't you find? Yeah, and they, in my case, those come in at the last, they're the last touch. The little tiny adding, things. That make, adding the sparkle. That makes all the difference, yes. adding the sparkle. And brings the magic. It does. It does, yeah. It's very, very interesting. Well, I'm, I'm really delighted to have you here, Susan. I wanted to say that um, we've been trying for a while.